So let's go through this reaction. And we'll go through the whole mechanism for this. And the first step is we should just predict what category this is. And we kind of just have to have this memorized. I don't know, um, do either of you know what type category of category? Category three. Yeah, this will be a category three. We basically have to have this memorized. Now, it turns out that the mechanism for category three is in many ways very similar to the mechanism for category two, although there has to be some differences at the end. But since we made some progress in category two last time, a lot of those steps will carry over. Well, let's go through trying to put in that mechanism. So you only know that it's category three by memorizing it? There, there is a way to understand that a little bit, but it'll be easier for us to understand it after we go through the mechanism. So, uh, but remind me to come back to that. And we'll, basically, a good question is, why do alcohols go through category two, but this amine goes through category three? Well, we'll be able to answer that a little bit more after we go through the mechanism. step. Notice that we have a strong acid, so we have to start by protonating somebody. Who should we protonate? Right. That's pretty similar to the category two mechanisms we saw last time. If you have a strong acid, you almost always have to start by having the strong acid give its proton to somebody. The strong acid won't wait to protonate. To some extent, you have to, mem uh, you have to memorize which reactions are equilibrium and which ones aren't. Mm -hmm. Most instructors don't actually require you to use equilibrium arrows, although it, you still need to know which mechanisms are equilibrium reactions and which ones aren't. So, so we, we do need to learn which are equilibrium. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit more in a second, too.
Good. Well, I think you guys did a good job on that uh, mechanism. The only problem we had was maybe forgetting that the first step we have to use this protonation. But after that, I think you can see how similar this is to category two. It's just that um, instead of having a second alcohol molecule replace this carbonyl oxygen, we have this nitrogen attack a second time using another lone pair. And then we end up with this. Now, um, I think that, uh, notice that what we have here is what we can call a proton transfer, where we transferred a proton from this nitrogen to this oxygen. Aren't you missing an H there? Could be an H where? Oh yeah, you're absolutely, are you right? Let's see, OH. So this really shouldn't have been negative, should it? Still. Should just be neutral. Yeah, good. So, that's good that you caught that. Yeah, my mistake. So that's right, that was wrong, and this is right. Okay, that gives us this positive charge. What was the purpose of this proton transfer, moving the proton from here to here? So the water can leave. Makes this into a better leaving group. And just to get rid of the positive charge on this nucleophile that doesn't like having that charge. Now I think we've seen that we could have shown this in two steps. We could have first shown the sulfate taking the proton from this nitrogen and then giving the proton to this oxygen. But it really saves time to just show the oxygen taking it directly from the nitrogen. I think that you actually showed it in two steps. I think that you actually showed the sulfate taking the proton from this nitrogen and then giving it to this oxygen. That's fine, uh, but this mechanism is so complicated that it's permissible to save time by doing this in one step and just have the oxygen take it from the nitrogen over here. That's how I think you usually see it done in lecture as a proton transfer. Mm -hmm. Why don't we take a look at where this is in the handout, although you guys pretty much have the mechanism down. So let's see, this page two. Yeah, so this is our category three reaction, two nucleophilic attacks. And you can see the nucleophile has a, should have a nitrogen in it. Um, the only mechanism I showed is the acid catalyzed mechanism, although I don't know if I actually put that in the handout. I should have. All right, so here's the mechanism. I think you guys basically uh, went through that. And again, I have these asterisks showing that instead of first deprotonating the nucleophile and then protonating the carbonyl oxygen, you could combine those into a single proton transfer. Is that on page two? Yeah. OK. So here's our category three with nitrogen nucleophiles. The only mechanism I included was the acid catalyzed. And the point I was making is that instead of having the nucleophilic nitrogen lose a proton and then the carbonyl oxygen gain a proton, you can combine those into a single proton transfer. Um, or you can separate them, whichever you like. All right, and then otherwise, uh, you guys got through uh, all the steps there. Now, why is it so we, we want to start to understand some of these uh, aspects more. So one thing that we want to understand is why were we able to, um, why is this category three but alcohols are category two? So. Because why don't we just start with what we ended? Like we would get uh, carbonyl carbon with connected, well, a carbonyl, which right. we're trying to add alcohol. So. Right. Now, let's see. I don't know if that's, that's quite the best way to think about it. Let's look at it from a slightly different angle. Um, this nitrogen attacked twice, but it started neutral. So how does it avoid getting a charge? After each attack, it has to lose a proton. After the first attack, it lost this proton. And then after it attacked the second time, it had a positive charge again, and it had to lose a proton again. In order for the same nucleophile to attack twice, if it's not going to end up with a charge, it has to be able to deprotonate twice. Well, alcohols only have one proton. So this is a good explanation for why an alcohol can only attack once. And if there's going to be a second nucleophilic attack, it has to come from a separate alcohol molecule. But each individual alcohol oxygen can only attack once, otherwise it would end up with a charge. So that makes it much easier to understand why nitrogen is in a separate category. This nitrogen has enough hydrogens to deprotonate twice, and therefore it can attack twice. Now, in the logic that you were going through a second ago, you said if this attacked twice, it would just end up with a carbonyl again. So you must have been thinking that after deprotonating, it would dealkylate. It would lose both the proton and the alkyl group over oh, here. Okay. But notice how the word dealkylation never comes up in organic chemistry. I just kind of made it up. It's much easier to lose a proton than to lose a carbon chain. That's a good thing to bring up, though, because that's a very common mistake that students make. Oftentimes, students do think that after the alcohol attacks, it's going to lose the R group instead of the H group. So that's an important thing to watch out for. We almost never see dealkylations. That word doesn't even sound right. We very commonly see deprotonations. So this can attack once because it can lose the proton. But it can't attack twice because it would be much harder to lose this alkyl group. That's a much rarer reaction. 